Hey everybody, Agrofiend here. I got a build for y'all today. Now I have not done one of these in a while and I'm also gonna do this all in one take because I wanna get something out there um, because I have been working on a build for quite some time and I haven't seen anything like it yet. We all know about Touch of Death, we all know about Quill Volley, uh, all the really OP Spiritborn builds. Now I will say this, so far this build is not extremely like you know, easy to put together, crazy. So if you're looking for one push button, one one button push button die thing, nuke the board, all that stuff, this probably isn't the build yet. I haven't figured it out just yet, um, but I'm close. I've made it to tier to uh, torment three at least with this build so far. So, and I know I'm missing quite a few things. Don't have the perfect gear. Um, I don't have uh, the perfect aspect, still missing several damage and quite a bit of the aspects. Missing one aspect altogether, I can't seem to get the drop. So I just wanna take the time to go over uh, my Thrash basic build that I've been working on for uh, four or five days now, maybe a week, or however long it's been since I've gotten the game. I started with that ev the, ev the Evade build that's out there right now. I started with that, trying to make that work, but I didn't know the infinite uh, interaction or anything like that. Um, I worked on that really hard and then we found out that somebody did it literally when I was like on the cusp of breaking it, I felt like, or pushing it to the next level. Um, so we, we saw that someone had actually broken it. So I gave up on that and went to my secondary with the, the build that I was going to work on next. And that's my basic build because I had not seen anybody try basic yet. So now again, caution here this is not a build for the faint of heart this is a grind it is a heck of a grind and it's not crazy powerful yet um it is not perfect it is in its very beginning stages i could probably use a really brilliant mind to help me put a few things together but with that being said i just want to jump into it and put it out there for youtube maybe one of y'all can crack it but i'm missing quite a few things so i'm gonna start with the gear here um, I am running uh, Harmony of Ebowaka. I hope that's how you say that. Um, for the uh, the damage buff you get for making everything uh, different spirits. Um, we're running primarily a Jaguar uh, damage build. So most of our damage is coming, well, all of our damage is coming from the Jaguar spirit. But everything else is also Gorilla and Eagle. I don't know if that's the correct combination yet, but it's what I've been working with so far. Okay, so we're gonna use the harmony there. Uh, on the chess piece, I've got max ferocity right now to, because my idea behind this was extremely fast attack speed. I was trying to go for like 100% plus, which I believe in combat with everything I have, I'm at like 105 or 110% uh, increased attack speed which I'm pretty sure you could push that to 200 somehow, but I don't know if I have the room or anything yet. But I'm going with Duelist on the chess piece. And again, these aspects could be on the wrong pieces, okay? This is just what I've come up with so far. This is not min-max. This is just what I've picked up, what I've found, um, and so on. Um, I do have survivability on my chess piece with total armor size. Now, that could be changed out because I was running unrelenting hits, but then when I found out you needed 5,000 armor to like max it out, it could be worth it going that way for it. There also could be um, some uh, worth in going for like a high block, high, I see a lot of uh, do damage to per block chance, do damage per dodge chance and some other things like that. That could possibly be a way to go. But um, right now I'm just trying straight uh, damage and critical damage and everything, and it's gotten me to Torment 3 so far. It wasn't easy, but it's there. But we're going max ferocity here and total armor size and thrash size for the tempering um, because I was going for attack speed. I was going for wide area clear uh, the best I could. Now as far as the other um, affixes on there, Max life and armor were definitely one I was going for. Uh, I tried rolling the lightning resistance. I, not 100% sure what else I would put there. Um, if you can roll that again with total armor size, I think you'd be fine with that if you're going on relenting hits. But right now, this is what I'm working with. It's just kind of for survivability. Um, on the gloves, I've got conceited. Uh, extra 20%, again, not a maxed out uh, aspect, could push it, you know, another 10%. 
which I think this works very well with um, what we're doing because I am running temerity and we are gaining barriers uh, per hit and everything. So it in increases our damage. Also, um, I, I, I had some damage while you had barrier up uh, stuff on in the Paragon tree and I might still have it there. I can't remember if I've changed it. Excuse me. I've done so much back and forth. But here, basic damage and thrash size, I think, are your two best ones. I could be wrong. Um, but if, if I could get basic damage and follow plus plus uh, points into follow through, I would do that too. But I, I don't think I can. Um, so thrash size to cover in a larger area. And basic damage, just the highest you can get on the gloves. And then I think the two main things you want on the gloves are crit strike chance and crit strike damage. Um, critical, this is going to be a critical build with using exploit to make things vulnerable. And if you want to put a little bit of, if you want to get some vulnerable damage in there, I'm not sure again which one works better, but the crit damage has been working really well for me with the way I have it built. Um, and again, don't have the perfect aspects. Uh, let's go to the, the pants or temerity. Um, everybody knows what that does. Uh, I, the, the amethysts that are in here, don't worry about those right now. I would probably either, I mean, those could work barrier generation, um, if we put more barrier damage, uh, and such, but I think, um, you could run those, but I was running, uh, emeralds for extra decks, um, which I might put those back in there because I was trying another build a second ago, but I haven't completely done everything. So you could put emerald, emeralds back in there like I had it. I had emeralds in there. Um, dealer's choice on the gems, I guess. But this, I had a, um, I had a pair of pants that had uh, disobedience on it, and I seemed like I was dying too fast. And so I put temerity on, and all of a sudden, nothing could kill me because we're hitting so fast that we are procking those lucky hit chances like crazy, and we're just staying um, up, you know, up to date, or uh, <clears throat> our life staying up, and so on and so forth, uh, because we're swinging so many times. I mean, like you're, you're talking like 20, 40 times in a second. I think we're making hits on some things, you know. Um, don't quote me on some of these things. I haven't gone to. I haven't done a deep dive on this build yet because it's still in its very beginning stages. Uh, on the boots, I've got Binding Morass um, to slow enemies, which seems to help quite a bit. Also, um, it uh, if you could get that up to 70%, it probably would slow down some of the damage and some of the movement and everything faster. So we're going to be diving into a lot of things and slowing the enemies down when you dive into them. <clears throat> feels like it ups your survivability, as well as you can put crowd control uh, I believe in the Paragons, I went into like plus 35% damage on crowd controlled enemies and so on and so forth. But you could put like, ex it allows you to put extra damage buffs somewhere in the build. I just haven't figured out quite 100% where uh, just yet. Um, as far as movement speed and thrash size, those were the best two to temper on here. Um, max life, armor. I think you just kind of want to go defensive boots. If you can add some extra damage somehow, go for it. The lightning resistance was just on here. The, like I said, these are not the best boots. I could find another pair of boots. I think I would want to keep maximum life. Maximum life seems, um, when I had lower maximum life and still kind of had the same build, survivability was down and so on and so forth. Shocker, your life is low. So I started cranking the life up, and now we're up to, you know, 5,500. The barrier generation is nice because it's a percentage of your life. Um, and, uh, isn't it? yeah, of your of your maximum life. So high life, I believe, is going to be a, 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 good, a good resource here. And if you can get maximum life on pretty much most of your gear, I think you'll be doing good. But we're looking for critical strike damage, critical strike chance. Definitely want to boost that critical strike chance because... In combat, if, as you'll see right now, um, just sitting here, my critical strike chance is 46.4, but because of what I'm running, it goes up to 56.4. I think you want to push that to 60 or 70% the best you can. I mean, get to 100% if you can, but um, that's definitely going to be, uh, whoops, important. There we go. Oh, that's not what I wanted. There we go. Um... We are running uh, uh, Sepazontek, which it 
you know, your basic skills deal 100% increased damage and always use your third attack, which this thing's third attack is a big AOE. Um, and, and then it cast three of them, which makes it wider. So you have three AOE just make, I mean, you can't even see your character and stuff sometimes. So it's real interesting and running the basic gems for basic damage increase. Um, this is just solid. You need this, this right here. I would say a hundred percent that this is definitely needed. I would say. I personally been playing think this is needed and think this is needed. I could be wrong. There are probably other things that I am missing. As I haven't played Diablo um, since season one. Um, so, anyways, I would think that these three uniques are required. Um, the pants, maybe not so much. Maybe disobedience works uh, more down the road. I think you would want disobedience if you're specking into armor instead of max life and using unrelenting strikes or unrelenting hits so but Sep sepazontek is definitely needed uh for this build on my amulet i am running moonrise fantastic i still have not got a max one that's the highest one i can get it's 102 percent, so i'm still missing you know 48 percent right there um on my moonrise amulet if i can get that um i think the build will definitely go up uh hunter cooldown because there's a really cool interaction i'm going to show y'all uh between armored hide and the ultimate which we're using the uh what's it called the hunter that's the the jaguar ultimate yeah the hunter i'm stupid it's right there um <laughs> we're going to use the the hunter <clears throat> and you can almost permanently have armor hide up so you can almost permanently have an unstoppable move up at all times and also it gives you a buff for what we have in the build of like 12 percent damage every time you're unstoppable for four seconds like it you, you see the damage go up it's really nice um and then again basic damage anywhere we can get basic damage we're going to grab it critical strike chance definitely max life yes um maybe not max life on the amulets and stuff maybe max life only on the gear and you could probably find something max life there I'd say probably 3,000 life. I was doing okay. I just kept pumping it because this is what I kept finding. So you definitely want the critical strike chance. If you can get critical strike damage, yes. The dexterity, the percentage of dexterity, I don't know yet. Like I said, I haven't min-maxed everything. Moonrise, 100%. Basic damage, 100%. Hunter cooldown, I would say 100%. And then critical strike chance, 100%. The other two slots, I haven't quite figured out yet, but I... Definitely think one of them needs to be critical strike damage uh, if you're going to min-max. Um, kind of like this. Maybe not the damage, but maybe the damage could be a defensive spell. or uh, Actually, what you could probably do is, is critical strike chance, critical strike damage, and then a resistance that you need uh, if you can do that on amulets. Again, I'm not too familiar. Um, same thing here. Critical strike chance, critical strike damage. And maybe a resistance probably is the best way to do this. Hunter cooldown, basic. But we're using Starving Ravagers. Now, we are, I am able to keep Ravager up indefinitely. Unless I kill a group and then move on and there's a long distance in between, um, it will die off. Other than that, we have Ravager up 100% time in combat if we activate it. It will not go away. I love this. It's a permanent buff, basically, when you're in combat, as long as you have it active. And if it dies in between, uh, if, it, if, it, if it runs out in between combat, it normally is already off cooldown, and you're ready to, to pop it again. So it's just pop your buffs, dive in with Hunter, bunch of kills, Hunter, Armored Hide. You want to make sure you Armored Hide and Hunter, uh, Armored Hide before you pull Hunter, and I'll show you why here in a minute. But that perk has been, I mean, that aspect has been fantastic. This is the one that needs to be replaced. My Edge Masters right now is in place of Aspect of Adaptability. Um, adaptability, I cannot get to drop. It's like another 100% increase uh, to basic attacks. So it, it just will not drop. And it and Moonrise were the ones that I saw and that Raven had told me about that made me really want to try a basic build. I was like, that is a lot of damage. It's like 250% increase. Plus, 
you can get like a hundred percent increase on four or five different items just to basics like your gloves and all your gen, you know everything with tempering and i was just like that you, you can crank your basics up to like a thousand you know a thousand percent not really sure if you can but anyways so on here you want the I think you want the same thing. You want critical strike chance, critical strike damage, and then a resistance. So turn that max life into a critical strike damage, and I think you have the perfect roll on a ring. My opinion could be wrong. There are smarter people out there than me, but it's been working. It's tough, and it's not. I think if I had max moonrise and adaptability, I would be in tier four or torment four or getting close. But it's it's rough right now. So, because sometimes you're just standing there, just do 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 do, and you're waiting on your buffs to come off cooldown. It's a very bursty, you know. You got some constant damage and the bar's going down, but all of a sudden you pop your buffs and you dive with Hunter and you watch that bar go, and it goes, you know. Um, but Edge Master is in place of adaptability right now. It's doing its job. It's working, but that could be a hell of a lot more. But again, I'm one probably off of a perfect on that right there. So that's the gear. Um, this is what we're sitting at now. Tech power is great. Armor, I think as long as you're above a thousand or something like that, when you're at a thousand, you have your maximum reduction. And unless you're doing unyielding hits, you probably don't need more than a thousand armor. Um, all my, all of my uh, gems over here. What I or my uh, jewelry. What I was saying about the uh, the resistance. Um, if you get a resistance for each of these, like let's say lightning, poison, and fire, put all three of these, uh, all three of them with diamonds. Um, like this one right here has poison resistance. Since it has poison resistance, I would put a diamond in it. Um, this one doesn't have anything. Probably put like an amethyst or a sapphire in it to give you shadow or cold resistance. You're gonna have to mix and match, I think, your jewelry with resistances and, uh, uh, your gems, right? If it, if it has a resistance on it, put a diamond. If it doesn't have a resistance on it, then you can put like this one right here. Doesn't have a resistance on it. Um, I could put, uh, you know, uh, a Ruby in there for fire resistance. Play with your diamonds and your resistances. I mean, uh, your gems and your resistances over here. That's probably what I would do there. So anyways, now into the meat. We're going to go into, so we're doing Gorilla on top, and, uh, oh, that's not right. It's going to be Eagle. Sorry, I was, so this is how I had it set up, Gorilla and Eagle. I was testing something uh, to give everything three different spirits to work with the the uh, the Abawaka. Um, so this, this just helps with survivability to go with Temerity, plus uh, some other things. Uh, you get, you know, Life is Shield and so on, and then... <clears throat> this just helps with uh, because we're going to be teleporting all over the map. This just increases our critical strike chance even more. Um, it's, you know, for every four meters you move, critical strike increased by four percent until you crit. We're going to be, you know, it's it's probably going to be guaranteed at just a four percent because we're going to be critting a lot. So you'll see it pop on and off and everything. It's just kind of go back and forth. But uh, centipede, mm, you know, I'm not poisoning anybody. I thought about putting centipede on and then using something like scourge or something to poison but that's just you know there's there's so many things you could probably do but this is what i'm running for now somebody's probably going to crack this a lot better than me um paragons okay this is not done but and it's probably not perfect but i did the you know what i what i thought so I started with exploit. I ran without this used to be Colossus, and I ran without exploit for a while, thinking that I was only going to go crit damage and critical, uh, you know, just a full crit build. But I noticed that every time I hit my sore and made something uh, invulnerable, um, that the damage would go up. And matter of fact, let's go to the skill tree first. So we'll we'll do the paragon in a minute. So, this is where we're going to get our damage, is Thrash. And we're going to go Thrash here, five points, Enhance Thrash. Um, after killing an enemy, your next Thrash generates 10 Vigor. 
uh, up to 10 casts of Thrash. That that really does help with uh, with the, the infinite Ravager that, that I was telling you about. And then Thrash's uh, third attack grants stack of Ferocity. Yes, we want all the attack speed we can get. Uh, no core here, but we put three points in follow through because I have 11. I have a nice, that's on, um, I think that's on my Ebowaka maybe that I get, that it's given me points into follow through. Or maybe it's on the Sepazonic. I don't know. It's on one of them, but you're getting points into follow through to just increase your damage. Uh, no points here. That's just, uh, con uh item con uh, con contribution. Um, so here we're using Soar. Now the reason I'm using Soar is number one for uh, Unstoppable to help with this. I'm trying to keep Unstoppable up as, many, as much as I can. Almost everything we have has Unstoppable. Our ultimate, Armor Hide and Soar, have Unstoppable. All damage increases. So every time you hit a button, you get a damage increase. Um, but we're using, I'm using Soar mainly, mainly as a source of escape. Teleport the hell out of there. You're, shoom, it, you're gone. Unstoppable, get. It has saved my butt so many times. I almost never use uh, use Soar unless I get frozen, I get stunned, I get put into a, you know, a black shadow to where I can't you know do anything and I got to dodge out and then boom, poof away. So yeah, uh, Soar is just your escape. So we're going to go one point into Soar and then enhance Soar into... Measured sword to make us unstoppable because normally when we're trying to get away, we're we're gonna land on somebody. We're not just going to an empty space. We're landing on uh, another enemy, and we could start doing damage, gaining our life back. Um, after you come down and grab sword, so like I said, you want one point in the mirage to go into the unrestrained power, which I'm trying to pick up just as much damage as I can. Um, trying to make everything work together. Vulnerable takes extra damage, or they do, you know, they do less damage to me when they're vulnerable, which helps us dive in. You know, uh, we're we're unstoppable a whole bunch. We dive in, you know, we hit we hit armored hide and dive in with our ultimate. That's four or five seconds of unstoppable right there, which is an increase. And then you know when uh, when the ultimate stops and the armored hide stops, we hit armored hide again and then hit the ultimate and it just keeps coming back and back. You can normally hit your ultimate about three or four times in one fight. Normally you're bursting down a group and you're moving on, bursting down a group, moving on. So, um, the, the boss fights is where I've got to find out where we can do some stuff at. Anyways, uh, unrestrained power increase while you're unstoppable. You're unstoppable a lot. Uh, we go focal point just to get to, to apex and to uh, diminishment. Like I said, we're diving in a whole bunch. So 15% less damage from the enemies around us helps even with temerity. Um, may not need diminishment because of temerity. If you use anything other than temerity, I would say probably want to put diminishment in there. Um there were three points floating around here that I had no idea what to do with, and I stuck them right here. This is this is those three. Um, but more vulnerable damage, doubled versus elite enemies. You definitely need that during uh, against elite enemies. Um, like I said, we are diving in, exploit, everything's vulnerable. So extra 9% of damage on top of that, and then doubled to elites isn't bad uh, when we first attack them. And we're trying to kill, you know, you, you want the goal is to get to where we kill everything in three seconds. Because that's how long exploit lasts. Okay. Uh, Ravager. Again, we can keep this up 100%. Now, this right here, I did not have this on. Well, let me go through this. Uh, we went one point in, into Ravager. Um, it's a buff. It uh, does extra damage to... Uh, it makes your minimum ferocity increase by two. Huge for us for attack, uh, for our attack speed. And then you have the additional six seconds of damage that it can do, um, which it's, you know, a Jaguar gorilla and an Eagle skill. So I believe it gets cranked on top of that. I tried this at five stacks. Didn't feel much different than one stack. So I brought it back down one to reallocate the points. Um, you can extend its duration. We don't need this anymore, uh, but we have to take it uh, to get to one of these. Now we're not using a core skill, so we don't need this to dash. We're already dashing because we're using a basic. And then um, this right here was interesting. 
once you hit 40 stacks, as soon as you jump into a, uh, if you jump, if you were to jump into a group with an elite, right, and uh, not have these on versus have them on, you can see a big difference in fighting them. I, I honestly have no idea what the hell's going on with this. I just was like, I'll try it one time. I see the 40 stacks. I don't, you know, the, it goes back and forth. So it's like, hmm. Okay. So it just helps do more damage against elites while it's up. And you can definitely notice the difference. So the next tree, uh, we are running armored hide and we are running the uh, max. We're running the enhanced armored hide mainly for maximum resolve. Um, because we get damage per point of resolve that we have. At one point in time, I don't remember what I had it with. Uh, excuse me, I'm going to take a drink. I'm going to try and cover this. I don't want it to be on YouTube. Y'all don't know what I'm drinking? Anyways, um, it's an energy drink, by the way, not alcohol. Um, I had 10 points of resolve somehow, uh, but now I have 8. I haven't figured that out yet. Anyways, uh, this is to, you're going to see your resolve go down quite a bit, but it comes back every five seconds, one tick. So it's going to go up and down a lot. So that means your damage is going up and down. I don't like that, but it works kind of because of what we can do with the ultimate and armored hide. And I'll show you that here in a little bit. There, there is a, you do, there is like a certain way you have to play this build in my opinion so far of what I have figured out. Um, we're going to go one point into, uh, endurance. And then we definitely want Fueled, which is life on kill, equal 15% of our maximum life. This definitely keeps us alive. Um, and we always have four stacks of uh, Ferocity because our Thrash is constantly stacking them. I think we have 12 stacks, normal, maybe. I could be wrong. It may only be when the ultimate is up. We may have eight normally, 12. I don't know, I see 12 a lot. Uh, but anyways, this is definitely important for survivability. And then this too, in my opinion, that extra like 10% damage reduction uh, on top of the vulnerable damage reduction. I mean, you got a lot of damage reduction uh, coming in there. And this kind of, you know, this is like an 8 to 10, let's see, 8, half, 4, 12. It's like 12%, 15% damage reduction or something like that um, when you pop iron hide or uh, armored hide. So um, I'm definitely running the counterattack. Um, passive. I tried to figure out if I could fit the ring in there. Mm -mm. I need extra. I need. I need the aspects more than I need this. I think it's more valuable to actually run counterattack uh, than it is just to run the ring and try and squeeze something else in there. Maybe if like we had more, you know, we had even more effects of. Um, Something about poisoning and stuff like that. I thought about Scourge. I've been looking at Scourge. A lot of people use Scourge uh, with um, with the you know the uh, the Touch of Death build. So this is on my mind too as one of my buffs. Um, and if that happens, maybe we can get rid of one of our ring aspects for uh, for this. But I'm not a hundred percent sure where just yet. Um. Anyways, it was a thought process. So, yes, Scourge is on my mind to see if maybe we can do something with it to make some buffs and do some other good things because I see a lot of builds using it. But as of right now, we're using Counterattack strictly for the passive, um, for the critical strike damage. And then, of course, we took three points of Anti-Venom because Poison Resistance, yes, please. Uh, if you get enough, if you can take these three off and you have enough Poison Resistance, uh in your armor at max level, then you could get rid of these three and put them somewhere else probably. Um, got three points in brilliance just because it's 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 more, um, our movement speed goes up and down and it's more damage. It's just cranking out more damage that I can, that we can do. Uh, potent. This is, this is a really good skill um, because it increases the damage they take from us by 30%. And we are hitting, we are cranking that up. That maxes out within like the first few swings. So it's just a flat 30 increase. Like, or not, a, maybe not a flat 30, but it's, you know, 30% more. Um, and I know you're not hearing me say flat, multiplicative, and all this other stuff. I'm not that smart. I click buttons. And then when I see the damage number go up, I make a note. So 
it works in my brain. I can't explain it, but I try, you know. Um, this is just a little bit extra critical strike damage because I don't think anything would hurt to have more critical strike damage per stack of ferocity because that, that's like another like, you know, 18% uh, when we're at max stacks. So down here is where we're going to get some, one of the fun interactions that I'm enjoying that I think actually like ramped the build up a little bit in damage. So like I said, we're using the hunter. Now I put five points into the hunter because I do like its damage and you do see it do a lot of damage whenever you activate it and we're activating. Oh, that's fun to happen in the middle of a video. I'm going to leave it in there. Thanks blizzard. We'll get back to it in just a second. Anyways, the hunter, uh, I'm not going to cut that out. I'm not doing it. Nope. Blizzard, help with the connections. I love you guys, but whew, help, help. All right. So let me get back into the skills. There we go. All right, so Hunter, I have five points in that because I love the damage. Do you need it? I don't know. But uh, this is amazing, the Harmonist Hunter. The Hunter overflows your ferocity by four stacks. That could be why we have 12. So we may have eight normally. So base eight, but we have 12 a lot. Um, causing you to deal 100% increased damage to injured enemies for eight seconds. Um and then you have Exalted Hunter, which helps it come back. Like I said, we normally can cast the Hunter three, four times a fight. Uh, and the cool thing is, is over here, I'll go ahead and go through all these, but I'll show you my favorite little perk, which is uh, this one. So, Resolution, 15% increased damage to Elites. Double this bonus if you're only fighting one. Fantastic. We need all the Elite help we can get. Um, we're going to take one in Spiritual Attunement just to get us to these two here. Uh, which is cast an ultimate skill makes you unstoppable. Again, unstoppable damage. You could put one point in here, but it's only like two seconds, I think. So I like the six seconds uh, because of the increase to the unstoppable damage. It's not a big increase to unstoppable damage, but you can notice a difference when you hit it. Um, and then supremacy, amazing. Any enemies you kill while an ultimate skill is active grants a stack of supremacy, increasing your damage by three up to 30. Ultimate skill ends, you keep that five, uh, and then you lose one, so you keep it for another five seconds after it ends. Um, yeah, it's fantastic. And, and our cooldown's down almost to 17 seconds, so you, you use your ultimate a lot. Like I said, it's a very bursty build, um, So and it has a lot to do with you know the hunter and armored hide and just like hitting all the right, all the right buttons. Uh, then we take one point uh, of sustenance to get to... Intricacy. Now, intricacy is important because when you go into a fight, like if I was first initializing a fight and my Ravager's not up, I'm, I'm going to sequence Ravager, Armor Hide, and then hit uh, my ultimate to dive in and start fighting. I'll go show you all some of that here in just a minute. I'll show you a little bit of a gameplay. But as that happens, as soon as you hit that ultimate, Armored Hide comes back and you can you can wait just a second and hit it again, and you because it's a free charge and it lasts longer. The the unstoppable lasts longer. The damage buff lasts longer. Normally you kill something and your ultimate's right back. You hit your ultimate again in the fight, get a kill. Ultimate comes back, but as soon as you hit that ultimate, armor hide comes back. You can hit it again for free right then to increase. So it's just ultimate armor hide, ultimate armor hide, ultimate armor hide, and you kind of got to try and balance like you need to make sure before you cast your ultimate the last thing you casted was ironhide you can use um soar and you know counter attack and things like that if you need to in a pinch but you don't want to try and re-engage until you have that little combo going because it's very bursty and it, it allows you to go from it used to be just activating jumping on and wait on your cooldowns and then like I was only relying on the ultimate, but now I can really ramp up the ultimate's damage plus my damage by, you know, hitting Ironhide first and letting the ultimate get all the buffs from activating the, uh, the, the, the armored hide, Ironhide, armored hide, 
one of those. So intricacy has really helped the uh, the damage go up quite a bit. And then for our key passive, I want the attack speed. More attack speed, more damage. This didn't make sense to me because if they're losing the vulnerable effect on basic attacks, we're not killing them in one basic swipe. So they're the vulnerable's going away. I haven't tried it yet. I might try it and see what happens, but this, the attack speed, seems good so far. I don't know how Prodigy's tempo is going to work. I haven't tested it yet, so I'm going to test these two um, coming soon. But right now, this one's working the best. So, anyways, that's your that's your uh, that's your skill tree. Uh, I'm going to move on to Paragons. So, like I was saying before. I started out with Colossus here, but I went to Exploit because Exploit seems better in the in the in the beginning. Um, <clears throat> you can fill this whole thing up if you want to before you go to the next one. Um, but if you choose a side, you can. I would probably in the early game pick this up and this up both sides of this, but then follow to here and then go. And you can come back for these if you want, but it's not that much of an investment. Uh, it really isn't, and it gives you a crap load of damage in the beginning, plus some survivability and everything like that. So I think exploit is the right call for the first, um, for the first one. Um, and you can you can hit the uh, the twenty five strength quite easily. So I I think exploit was the right starter uh, for this build. Now past that. There could be a better number one. There could be a better number one board. There could be a better number two, number three, or whatever number four. What I did was is I went. Um, let's see. This was critical strike damage. That scared the hell out of me. This is jaguar damage. I'm pretty sure that I went here, filled all of this up because I believe with what we're doing, this is our most important board. Um. And then our second most important board is going to be this one. Uh, you could leave these out and then go up here because you got damage um, and attack speed, resistance. You got the the sapping. One of the other ones. See, I didn't I didn't take this one, which you know if I can, I might go over this way. And come down and try and grab that if I can. Oh, no, I can't. I don't have another board. So I'm stupid. So, I mean, yeah, you could. So I could move this over to here and go down because it's going down to try and grab this, um, which may be the way to do it. Like I said, this isn't perfect. So, but I do think that Colossal gets us a lot of damage. And it's the resolve, and so on and so forth. But I think you need exploit before you get colossal. And then this board right here, you got damage and dex, damage and dex. You've got resistance all, non physical damage, non physical damage, uh, and then some max life and resistance. Like this is a big board, in my opinion, because we're fire damage. <clears throat> we're non physical, right? Non physical damage. We're just cranking with this board. Beyond that, I do think I am going to move this board over here to come off here and go down. Um, so it would come probably here, grab these four, come here, come here, come here, and then it'll go down into here to grab this, right? And so you would come this way, this way, this way, this way to this way, and then you branch into here, and then you branch into here, right? So I think that I think moving this board over here is probably going to be better, but um, with this board you get critical strike damage, which is fantastic. What we want and damage, same thing. This is uh, a big critical strike and damage increase, and I run spirit here because it was easy to catch the uh, the the dexterity off of it, um, and the critical critical strike damage is is important. Like I said, plus. Uh, critical strikes increase the damage an enemy takes from us. So if we're constantly critting and we're constantly doing critical strike damage, it's not only critical strike damage increasing our damage, but the fact they take more damage from our critical strikes 
I think Spirit was the uh, the correct um, little just nook here, and we're not going to be taking a lot of the uh, the legendary nodes. I'm going in and getting glyphs plus a couple buffers. Could be wrong, hundred percent could be wrong. Over here, uh, running hone jaguar damage. So we got jaguar damage and we got gorilla damage. Um, you got vulnerable. You got damage to crowd control, which the uh, the boots are helping us with because they're slowing everything down. at 70% damage to crowd-controlled enemies, okay? And then, again, you got more vulnerable damage. Going to have more vulnerable damage as soon as I get the uh, the intelligence or the uh, strength up. So, which we... How much do I need? I need, what, two nodes? No, one node, one, five, 22. No, I need two nodes. So, like, put one there, and somewhere else. But I could probably find another strength here. But anyways, um, that's going to incre uh, increase there. That's going to increase here. So, once the intelligence goes up, that increases. Once the uh, strength goes up, that increases. Um, but vulnerable damage... Crowd control damage, which is a big number. It's a really big number. And then uh, Jaguar helping us with the uh, the critical strike chance is important. Dealing damage with your Jaguar skills increases your critical strike chance by 1% 1, 1 for 6 seconds up to 10%. When I said earlier that my critical strike chance right now is at like 48.6 or 46.8% or something like that. But in combat it goes to 50 and then you add, you know, it's 58, and then you add another, and it's at 62 because we're moving because of Eagle. It's constantly on and off, on and off, on and off. Um, we've got, I would say, we've got our critical strike chance in combat somewhere between, like, whatever that number was, plus 10, plus 4. So that's that's kind of how you can look at it. Whatever your critical strike chance is, plus 10, plus 4, you know, plus 14, you know, but the, I say plus 10, that's definitely your base because you're going to make this activate. The 4% off of the Eagle is kind of not reliable, so I only do the 10%, but you could technically do four. Anyways, uh, and then coming up here, the last one that I'm going to put over here is going to be Canny, which is all non-physical damage uh, is increased. So I think Canny is probably the best one. I thought about Turf, but it's damage uh, reduction. If I'm having a problem with survivability, I'll put Turf up here. Um, and it's still going to give us some damage increase, but it's going to... Uh, to uh, give us, you know, another 10% damage reduction to everybody close to us, and we're always in close. Um, and if we start putting a little more together on all this, uh, the close enemies, you could run the sore with the Vortex uh, instead of the Unstoppable to bring everybody closer, which means they do damage, they do, you know, less damage to you. So that could be a thing as well. Um, and yeah, so Turf was the only one that, I would change out for Canny if you're having some survivability problems. Uh, turf is another decent little option. But uh, went over here, grab this, grab that, um, because casting three and getting a 30%, I mean, we're one, two, three, we're done. I mean, we're there, you know, because uh, we're they're, they're Gorilla, Jaguar, and Eagle skills. We're casting them in a row. I hope this is working like it is. I hope it's counting. Um, I think it is. I could be wrong. Somebody correct me. Uh, bring this up for some more attack speed, which we love attack speed. And then we're going to bring this up, bring it to the glyph. And then you're going to want to come off of this and pick up. Uh, you may not need the intelligence. You might need the intelligence. So depending on what you need here, pick up the intelligence if you need to activate it. Boom, boom, boom. Um, I don't think we need maximum resource at all so nothing here so you just want to come up hit this to get the glyph and then come off and grab these notes here and then you can you don't want to go there don't go there you don't really need anything else so um, but this was a pretty important board in my opinion because of sapping and the sapping and the glyph and then attack speed and you definitely want some resist all but the middle board's like your, your banger for damage. This is just an add-on. This is just an add-on. Now, I could, uh, like I said, 
I'm probably going to end up moving this board over here. Hold on. That actually might be better. So what I'm going to do is, is what do we have here? We have spirit. Hold on. Let's just go ahead and. Yeah. Uh, the hill. Oh. So we have a uh, what board do I got over here? In fighter. All right. So I'm gonna take in fighter. Well, let's uh this 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 this. And then we will, we'll do end fighter preview, and we want the glyph like this. Attach that board. Yep. And then we'll go here. Just make sure. Yeah. Uh, we'll take the one with more strength and intelligence. Damage, 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 damage. And then we'll go over to here, down, damage, damage, damage. That's all we got right now. So now, what we'll do is, is we'll come down into here and pull over, grab that max life and armor, and we'll grab revealing. So that'll give us another legendary, which this is what I was thinking about doing earlier. So, so do this here and then put, uh, uh, what did I have there? It wasn't canny. It was spirit, right? And put spirit back in there. Oh, what? Was it not spirit? It was spirit. Well, I'll have to activate, uh... How much dex do I need? 15? Oof. That's dex. That's dex. Oh, I'll, I'll play with that here in a little bit. But anyways, run that there. Pull this over. And then just kind of boop, boop. And then you can stick to the wall and grab that there too. So, anyways, there's my Paragons. It's not perfect. A lot can be changed. I still have 120 points coming, and it's going to change immensely, probably 100 more times. But this is what it is in its, in its baby stages. So, I'm going to go back over these and give you all time to copy. So, I'm going to pause for just a few seconds, and let you, or at least go over them, pause, go through them, and then so on. Um, anyways... Uh, and then I would probably go here next. I would probably go here next. And then I would probably go Spirit next. Come down through here. Take all the damage. Sorry. Get y'all screenshots. Take all the damage. And then run down through here. Grab this. Run this wall like this right here. Grab this whole node. And probably take the strength to here. I would grab probably all of this. Yeah. And then... This would be your last one right here. Which is Jaguar. Okay, so, in just in case y'all missed it, exploit. I know I'm terrible at these. Colossal. Uh, didn't do one. We didn't get a glyph there. Oh, yeah, we're going to go up and get that glyph. This glyph is going to be canny. This glyph is going to be canny. 
If you're having problems with survivability, it's turf. Okay. This glyph is spirit. And like I said, this glyph is hone. And I don't have the, I need the second part of that activated actually. I need that critical strike chance. How much do I need? I need two points. Do I have it? I do have it if I go. That's a strength. That's a strength. Oh, but that one's not in there yet. Okay, so we're going to take that out and put it in. Is there really not one point strength anywhere that I can snag for this? I need this to go. I need this to. I need to get this up. I need this uh, strength. We're going to have to drop this and just go here, here. This is important. I need that extra crit. We'll lose that for just a little bit. Okay. Don't pay attention to what I just did there. All right. Okay. Uh, and as far as the mercenaries, not a clue. Um Find something that does crowd control or find something that increases your critical strike damage. Um, makes vulnerable. Probably making vulnerable would be nice. So, yeah, no idea. Um, on I haven't tested these at all. I still have to level them up. So, but anyways, that is the basic build. And... Hopefully, I don't get my butt kicked here in a second. But I'm going to uh, set this back up. Because, again, I was trying some different things. That's on my X button. My 4 is my LB. I need my Hunter there. Soar is on my RB. Ironhide is on my... Yep. Mm -hmm. The hell did I have on my RB? Counterattack. Yes, that's how I had it. RB counterattack. Yep, yep. Okay. Well, I'm going to... Uh, now, just like I said, I'm not the best player at this game, but I do. I have made it to Torment 3. It's uh, not easy, but I have beaten this. Um... I can try and go in and show you what it's like right now, but it is rough. It is slow. You kind of got to, like, hit a pile, kill as much as you can, run to the next one to try and keep up with the timer because, again, we're not killing everything extremely fast. So I'll tell you what. I'll do a 40, and hopefully, because I just, I think I remembered most of the build. I'm, I'm hoping that it's just as good as it was when I was working on it because, like I said, I, uh, I forgot to copy it all down and then put uh, put it somewhere so I could put it back together because I was going to put a quill volley or a touch of death build together just to speed through some of this stuff a little faster so I can get all the paragon points and really maybe make this thing shine but um, I've been working on it but anyways you want to do this, this, and this and then you just swing, hit do it again and you just teleport all over the place just like that so you hit the armor, you hit the cat and you just mow through things. Now, this is a level 4. This is a tier 40. So, like I said, it's, um, I've done Torment 3 with it. So, yeah, these little guys right here, I normally just do that. Oh, I'm not off cooldown, so we'll just keep going. And you want to make sure you keep your Ravager up the whole time, which is it's the green bar above it. Like I said, this is not fast. This is methodic. But if you want to know a different way to play... So now, since Armored High was the last one that I used, right there, I can use the I can use my ultimate, get it back, and then the combo is back. You see what I'm saying? Because you're not going to have the cat forever. You're not going to have the hunter forever. But this is a tier 40. And I mean, it's kind of slow going. Ow. 
but it's I enjoy this playstyle. And I enjoy doing something no one's doing. You know? So so I can hit my armored hide again for a little buff. Because my uh my hunter's about to come back. But you see you just zip all over the place. Oh, see, now we're stuck. We can get out of there like that. Now, if we use Hunter again, we're going to get Sore back, right? So what I would do is, is I would hang right here because Ravager's down as well. So you just kind of chill for a second. All right, Sore's back. You know, just a few seconds. All right, here we go. So, oh, that was a portal anyway. It's going to dumb. Here, 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 and attack. There we go. Like I said, very bursty. Here, here, there we go. Iron high, and then you can hit it again for free once. You can see we're still unstoppable. Here, here. All right, we are out of hunter, but we can hit that again once for free to make it extend. If you notice, when I when armored hide down here is flashing, when this is flashing, that's a free cast. So if you can hit that. Um, you get that you get that unstoppable damage bonus, and you get your resolve back, right? So you get that damage bonus from what we have. And I'm gonna try and make it to the to the boss. Like I said, this isn't the fastest build in the world. How did you not, hurt not the fastest build in the world, but it is a lot of fun. I think it can be faster. If I had adaptability, see elites and stuff. See the the health drains a little slow, but. If I had uh, adaptability and a maxed out uh, Moonrise, I think we'd be in business. Cast my... See, we got some we got some big boys coming in here. You kind of want to try and kill the trash the best you can, and then focus on the big ones. So we can zip in. Like I said, this is tier 40. I have cleared a, uh, a Torment 3, but it's very boring. Um, I'm hoping that I don't I didn't mess the build up too much from its original deviation to where I can still do torment If I have I will figure it back out Now while I'm doing a quick run-through of this I do want to thank one person That this would not be possible without and that is Raven ritual. I'm gonna link Raven's uh, Twitch in the um, in the description below and I'll, I'll let him tell you the story about why if it wasn't for him I wouldn't be playing Diablo 4 again so thank you Raven I appreciate you your friendship means more to me than you'll ever know we're gonna go kill a boss now in your honor okay so like I said the boss damage a little lackluster we are on a, on a 40 though so it might you know See, it, it doesn't do bad. Like, I think there's potential in... Now, your your combo doesn't come back, so I rotate between counterattack, keeping myself where I can't get hit, hit some sore for some vulnerability. Like, unless it's a really big one-shot, Temerity can kind of just heal through everything. You just tank the shit out of it. So... But that's it in a nutshell. Um... So, yeah, that's that's the build in a nutshell, pretty much. So, um, Raven, thank you. I'm having a blast with this. I am going to try and be the first person to take a basic build into uh, Torment 4, and I'm going to try and be the first person to take a basic build to Pit Level 100, if I can. And there's no gimmicks about this build, no crazy OP stuff. I think this is just a good old-fashioned Diablo build to where you're cranking damage and attack speed, and you're just beating the everlasting crap out of stuff. And I love it. I'm all here for it. It might be slow. It might be methodical. It might not be for you. If you love basic builds, this build's going to be for you. It is grindy. What I would suggest, I would suggest picking up TOD, or Quill Volley, or something that can speed run the crap through, uh, out of everything. Speed run everything, get you a good um, boss killer build, and a good, you know, whatever, you know, that I, I would go TOD. TOD just wrecks bosses, it wrecks everything else. I would go Touch of Death, my opinion. Quills are fun, Touch of Death, probably what I would do first. 
run through, get all your paragons, get um, get you know as I mean, yeah, get all your paragons that you can, ground with paragons, get gear, so on and so forth, and then come back to a basic build and play around with the basic build and go have fun and try and push pits with it and stuff like that. But I wish I would have gotten all my stuff first, the paragons and everything because it is slow going in the very beginning with this build um you do need to go fast so but anyways if you made it to the end of this video i appreciate you please subscribe please hit that like comment everything it all helps i haven't made a video in a very long time and i'm hoping to be the first person to have a successful basic build with the jaguar thrash basic attack build here in diablo 4 on the spirit born i'm coming back i love it I love this game. So, anyways, Raven, to you personally, thank you, my friend. Without you, I wouldn't be making this game, uh, this uh, this video. Uh, to everybody else, all my community members, thank you very much. Um, I love you guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.